Today, we're looking at a brown ink from J. Herbon 1670 anniversary line, sparkly brown, Karub to Shipra. Not bad, I didn't even have to look down for that. As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, it really does help me out if you could check out the entire video. If you're new here, I'm an ink guy, and welcome back to everyone that's been here before. If you like brown inks, take a look down in the description. You should be able to find a link down there for the playlist marked brown. There are three papers used to standardize some of the writing samples. Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia. Let's start out with 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1, we're gonna put these together. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now, you see it comes through quite a bit darker in the one that has had the shimmer ectomy. Huge process. Very scientific. It, it's not at all just letting the ink sit and siphoning some off the top. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does shade some here. I think it shows quite a bit nicer on the uh, shimmer ectomy version. Seven seconds to dry, only five seconds to dry once the sparkles have been removed, which was strange for me to think about. The medium is much darker with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 13 seconds to dry. When it came to the shimmerectomy, we see that there is a little bit of shading that does occur. Look at the word jumps. Not a whole lot though, and 11 seconds to dry. For some reason, there's no scrubby here. The scrubby for both show not a lot of color variation, and there's really not there. The smear test says you can smear it while you're writing and be able to read what's underneath. And the good news, with many shimmer inks, you can smear it weeks later. To make sure there's a range of experience with this ink, all the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then, a Noodler's Ahab with a Fountain Pen Revolution broad nib was inked up, used for a day, and then used to take the notes for this video. Now, let's take a look at the second standard paper, 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Not on either of them. The extra fine has no feather spread, halo sheen, same tone. No real shading, 11 seconds to dry. Same thing going on with the no shimmer version. The medium is much darker, little darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 21 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both are showing no color variation and we're really not getting it. The smear says you will lose it if you smear. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and it's immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And you do see how the shimmer really stays there at the bottom, along with a much, you know, I don't know, condensed, it's brown, but it's weird because of what moves up. We see magentas and purples and oranges and browns at the very top. And on the very, very top, far right, far left, you see a little bit of turquoise. It makes it a very complex ink. On its own, it should be shading like crazy. It just doesn't seem to be. Now the one on the right was let dry for 10 minutes before it was dunked into water. And it very much looks the same, except we see the addition of some yellows. So we see that kind of magenta push up the browns. If you look across the top, you see the turquoise, but around the middle, come down a little bit, and you see some of this orangey yellow tone that's very nice. The third standard paper is 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. 
No more using both papers. I just felt it was confusing to look at. So I'm not going to be showing the shimmerectomy versions anymore. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is only slightly lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, moments of shading. Look at how the B is a bit darker and the K is a little bit darker, but not a lot. The shimmer sort of makes some of what should be darker areas look lighter through being a little bit more reflective. Eight seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both are showing us no color variation and we're really not getting it, but the smear test says you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the water, obviously not a note-taking ink if you need to go back and highlight your notes. It's completely blown out and useless. Water is reactivating and lifting a great deal of this up off the page, but this is a pigmented ink, so it is getting into there some and really holding on. Now, I'm doing a longer term test on a Noodler's Ahab where I use this ink for a whole year constantly and it's being very interesting. Pen flush is breaking up a whole lot more of this ink but we are still seeing some of that pigment holding onto the paper. That is not how it will typically perform in the pen with any kind of routine maintenance. One third bleach solution is completely removing it from the paper although discoloring the paper some I don't know. I'm, I'm mixed. I think you may need some pen flush to get this out of your pen. Keeping things interesting by changing up the paper for the second set of writing samples. This next paper is North Books. We do see bleeding that occurs, but only in the scrubby area. This is where I had at one point thought about doing water testing and nah, I decided I don't really want to do that. No real ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. This paper really does kill some of the effect of this ink. None of the shimmer really shows through and it also, you know, any shading it could have doesn't. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than this stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, three seconds to dry. The medium is about the same darkness as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. The smear test says you could still read it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, there's an average viscosity of 2.5 with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. J. Herban's Sparkly Brown has a viscosity of 3.5 nine and that has a lot to do with all of the shimmer that's in there so it's a drier running ink which may account for some of people's flow issue that they've gotten if you're interested in how the viscosity tests are done calculated and put onto the bell curve take a look down in the description there's a link for that the next writing sample is done on a Field Notes steno pad. The only bleeding that we get is where the scrubby occurs, where it's put on very thick. But other than that, everything seems to be very good. No other bleeding or ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. This paper absorbs all of the characteristics of this ink, the shading, the sparkles, all of it. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade and three seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, four seconds to dry. But why would you use it on a paper that sucks up the sparkles? <laughs> four seconds to dry. This scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. The smear test says you could recover it if you accidentally smeared while writing this. 
To find the average dry time, the writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tumway River, and Rhodia paper are averaged out and put onto a bell curve. They're normalized. For the inks tested, the average dry time is 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. J. Herban's Carub de Chypre has an average dry time of 12 seconds, making it just a little bit faster. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper, because why not? It bleeds quite a bit. This is all medium up here, bleeding through, but this is fine, bleeding through quite a bit. So it does bleed a lot through the 20 pound copy paper. It does not touch the page underneath. So you could use the underneath page. You just can't use the back of this paper comfortably. Now that medium has no feather. No, I'm sorry, it has feather. Look at Shipra. On the YPR, there's so much feathering right there. It's really growing together. The IN and Herban, it's really, it's growing out there. It does spread. That's a medium writing about like a broad. No halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine is just a little bit lighter than the medium. It does have some very minor feathering, honestly very little, and I'm quite surprised. I think it might be because it's a pigmented ink. We see some feathering in jumps. We see some feathering in seconds, but nothing crazy, nothing that should stop you from being willing to use this here. It spreads to about a medium, no halo sheen, no shade. One second to dry. The scrubby shows us no color variation. We didn't expect it, we didn't get it. And the smear test says you could easily, because it's not smearing, not on this paper. Instead of doing color comparisons to J. Herban's Cheroub de Chypre, I would prefer to find an ink that complements that color on the page. I went with a blue ink from Califolio Azure, because I do think that blue and brown have a very classic look together. If you would prefer a different color for a compliment, take a look in the description, choose the color of your liking, and go to that playlist. So what do I think of J. Herban's 1670 Carub de Chepre? This was the first shimmer ink that I purchased. I still have that bottle. Uh, I don't know why I do enjoy using it. Because I don't use shimmer inks at work, if you buy a bottle of a shimmer ink, make sure you like it. Lucky for me, I like this one. Even though it doesn't always perform as well as we would like. Sometimes you just need to be willing to work with an ink. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? Like many shimmer inks, the broader and wetter the better. You gotta get those sparkles on the page. I hope you found this video useful, and I hope to see you tomorrow when we take a look at KWZ's Honey.